to XSLT3 when it becomes an official recommendation? Well, how's the world reacted to XSLT2? Answer is very variable reaction. Um, those who use it and use it heavily get enormous amounts of value from it and they love it. Um, those who don't use it, well, they react by ignoring it. Um, and, and I think that's the way with programming languages. Very few technologies end up dominating the world and it's not the aim, I think, to be exclusive and dominate the world. The browser situation is interesting. You mentioned JavaScript and we're doing Saxon on the browser and we're still, we still have a great belief that XSLT on the browser um, can deliver great value. And JavaScript, of course, has come in many strides over the, over the years. Um, but it's still not a, not a software engineering um, miracle story, is it? It's, um, I think we can do better. You know, I'd, I'd like to see declarative languages making an impact there. I'd like to see um, more reliability on the browser, more portability on the, on, on, on the browser. Um, but XSLT really has, has proved itself, and the main uses are, are, are the... the big server-side applications, the people doing, I mean, most of our users, I think, banks, publishers, they're processing very large quantities of data, and the data's all in XML, they're using XSLT for it, and every ounce of productivity and performance they can get is of, of value, and most of that is, is server-side. Um, XSLT 3, well, I think we know that with a mature technology, the world moves forward slowly. Um, you know, when you look at sort of COBOL 96 or whatever it was, or, or SQL 92, it takes 10 years before, before the world moves forward to a new standard. It takes 10 years to develop the standard, another 10 years to adopt it. So you've got to take a very long-term perspective. Um, but I think the things we've done in XSLT3 have value and, and it's, it's worth waiting for the adoption.